Hello, hi, and welcome to today's video in which we are going to have an overview of so-called events. An event is something that can happen with a button or a slider or an input field, like uh, something with this glass here. I've got a glass. This glass could have an event. Someone is drinking from it. That's the event. That would be executed right now. It could have an event. It is lifted. That is happening right now. Uh, it is put down. That's happening right now. These events are triggers, right? These events are triggers. They are looking at the system and component status and they are executing a function depending on it. Um, so buttons have it, sliders have it, switches have it, all components basically have, even the screen has some. And I'm gonna give you an overview of the most important ones, the most, the ones I use the most, but there is in total, if you hit F1 and tier portal, there is a help function. There it is. In total, if you search for events, there is a huge list. This huge list here, and there is in total, I counted them, I put them in Excel and just looked at how many lines there are, 88 different events. So 88 different things that could happen with a component in uh, inside of an HMI. That is quite a lot. I have definitely not used all of them. Um, but I'm going to show you the most important ones because people, people, uh, everyone gets confused in the beginning. What is this? What is that? Um, if I have my push button here, just the standard push button here from the right side, I go to properties and there are the so-called events. And there we have for this push button, we have click, press, release, activate, deactivate, change. If I select a different component, for example, this slider here, this slider has activate, deactivate, change. Um, one mistake that I did actually, <laughs> I just saw already, uh, increase the tag and that should be, this is not important what I'm doing right now. That's just for showing you later on. And then I have the switch, for example, the switch itself has change, switch on, switch off, activate, deactivate. You see some of those are the same for them. For example, activate, deactivate, all of them have activate, deactivate, right? Um, or the I.O. field here. The I.O. field could have activate, deactivate, input finished. So every component has their own events that can happen with them. If you just click on the screen, so somewhere in the center here, you see the screen itself, screen one is selected now, has loaded and cleared. So there are so many events. Um, let's have a look at them one by one, basically, uh, the most important ones. So the ones that we have available for all these components that I just showed, um, I will just run my HMI simulation here. That's just a rough overview, right? There's way more to it. And I saw in the comments, people were asking for it. What is this? What is this? Why do we have this? I was like, yeah, sure. Let's make a video about it. <laughs> um, and that's what we're doing now um, because I was confused as well in the beginning about it. <clears throat> so you see my HMI there. Let me actually zoom in. A bit. So you see my HMI here. Um, I have this test button. I have this test button. I have the slider. I have the switch. I have not clicked on anything yet. And we can already see um, whenever I do something, whenever this event happens, we're that, that I'm talking about, uh, we add plus one to the field that's right next to it. So right now it seems like activate was added. Activate on this button. So this button was somehow activated. What I can also see loaded is also at a value one. So those two events, they already happened. Let me quickly explain. Um, activate is the event of this button. This button can get activated. So if the screen is loaded, one of these elements, if you have 100 buttons on the screen, one is automatically activated, the button on the top left. Um, and that happened with the button. You can see it a little bit. It has a little blue outline. Just slightly that means it it was activated it is not being pressed on but it's it's the active element like if you had um if you're for example in your uh can i do this probably yeah if i am here in my explorer my right, windows explorer you see that one element is now active right S sp whatever that is is now active videos is now active so one of these elements is active and that's also with the button right now. This means it was activated once. If I click some, 
um, that's the activate here. The loaded is one because this is the loaded event of the screen. The screen was loaded. That means the event screen uh, screen loaded. So let's get back to tier portal. Uh, the event screen loaded, if I go into my tier portal, if I click on the screen, I go to properties and events, there is this loaded event. This was executed once because, hey, this screen was loaded. <clears throat> we have the test button, we have the activate. Hey, this activate event here on the test button was executed because the button was activated. It wasn't pressed, it was activated, meaning somehow it is the active element. However, that happened. So let's... Um, Let's deactivate the button. If I click anywhere else on the screen, anywhere, right? <laughs> of course, not anywhere. If I click on another element, for example, this switch here, you see that deactivate was added. That means this button is not the active element anymore. Can I actually hit tab? I can actually tap through. You see, I can tap through the single, I'm just pressing tab right now, so I'm not clicking on anything. You see, as soon as the test button gets active, Active is plus one. As soon as it deactivated, I just hit tab. It gets deactivated, gets, gets executed. So when I get to the button the next time, which is now active again. If I hit tab again, it's deactivate. That event happens. And this is what I have programmed here in TR Portal. If this deactivate events on the button happens, I am just simply increasing the tag and showing the number on the screen. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, so that's activate, deactivate, loaded and cleared. Loaded is now one because this screen was loaded once. If I go to another screen, that's what this button here does. I'm on another screen now. I go back to the first screen. You see loaded is now two and cleared is one. Loaded means this screen was activated. Cleared means this screen was deactivated. So if I click this now, cleared is also two. Loaded is still two. Cleared is also two. If I go back, loaded is three. Cleared is two. Because the screen was showed three times and got away two times, right? <clears throat> if I change the screen, if I do this over and over again, you see activate and deactivate also always increase. Because if I get to the screen, the test button becomes the active element. If I get away from the screen, it becomes deactivated. That event is still being executed, even though we're leaving the screen, because it's the deactivate event. <clears throat> Good, next. We have these three, they are always confusing. Click, press, release. We have click, press, release, and they're actually pretty simple. Um, press is the most easy. I am now pressing the button. Whoops, I pressed it twice, whoops. <laughs> I'm now pressing the button, meaning I'm adding one on top of it. If I release my mouse button, we're calling the release. If I press, it's the press, if I release, it's the release. If I press, it's the press. If I release, it's the release. That's as simple as it is. And the click is a combination of press and release. Press and release. The only difference between click and release here pretty much is um, if I click on this, if I press on this button and I get out of it, and I now release, we still have the release because the button is not pressed anymore, but we do not have this click. Click means the button was pressed and the button was released on the button, right? on, on the button itself. If I release somewhere else, the button is still released, but it's not being clicked. Like click is really on the button itself. <clears throat> yeah. The next that we have is change, right? Change event, we see it down here as well. The change event is when the button is pressed or released. Right, when it's pressed or released, so it's both just together. Right now it was pressed 25 times, it was released 24 times, that is 25, 24, that's uh, an addition, that's 49. That's 49. If I release now, that's 50. That's the change. Now it's a little bit confused. So those are the things that you can do with a button, right? the events that the button can call and you can use all of them at the same time in your program they are all completely independent from each other you can use all you can use none you can use one or two completely depends on what you want to do um, the next thing is change slider it's a little bit different it's also this the slider has also a change event 
Now, what you would think is that if you um, change the value, so if you go from the value from 0 to 4, that's one change from 4 to 7, that's another change from 7 to 75, that's another change. That is not the case. Right now, the slider is not changed. If I activate the slider, now the slider is activated, meaning it would actually call the event activate. Uh, yeah would call the event activate, but I don't have anything connected to it. Um, now I change the slider. And now you see, right? You see it changes for every time I change the value. And even, and you got to be very careful about this, even if I'm not changing the value, that's what I meant earlier. Even if you're not changing the value, was a little bit unclear before, um, the event is being called. It has nothing to do with the value itself. It has to do with the slider. If we change anything in the slider itself, right? So I'm now changing. I'm still, I'm still theoretically changing the value. Like the chat, the you see, it's adding up. Cause I'm out here. I'm just doing this. It recognizes I try to change it, right? That's when the event is called. Not when, not just when we're changing the value. So very careful about this. I've seen that done wrong plenty of times because of course it happens that you drag it out of here and then you uh, you end up with the wrong values very careful with this <clears throat> yeah of course you don't always need for events i just add up numbers here for as examples of course you don't just add up numbers you for example here change screens you turn something on you turn something off you start a timer you do things adding up numbers is just my way of showing it to you right now so Three more, then we're good to go. We have a switch. This switch has change. That's when the really the switch changes from off to on or from on to off. Then we have activate, deactivate. Those are the same. If the switch gets activated, so selected, that's activate. If it gets deselected, it's deactivate. Then we have switch on, switch off. So switch on, switch off, pretty obvious. The switch right now is on. If I switch it off, there we go. Uh, if I switch it on, sorry, the switch was off. If I switch it on, it's the switch on event. If I switch it off again, whoops, by double clicking on it, it's the switch off event. If I double click again, it's the switch on event, switch off event. So it's being executed once when the value changes, right? <clears throat> uh, the loaded cleared, this was the screen itself. If I go to the screen here, we have loaded and cleared, of course. Then the last one I have is here on another screen. Uh, on actually my screen number two and there we have the so-called input finished for an input field here that's also a pretty standard thing there we have input finished that indicates to us that you're still changing the value so right now the input here is zero if i now type something in like 89 nothing happens on my input finished i have to submit now i changed the value i had i hit enter Right? When I hit enter, the, the input finished event got called. If I change it again, you see nothing happens. And now I hit enter. Boop. Second time. Yeah. So rough overview about events, properties and events. They can get confusing for a beginner. Um, and they are definitely still confusing when you're experienced. There's 88 different ones. And every different... Uh, every hardware has their own ones sometimes. So you see runtime, professional, comfort panels, panels, basic panels. They have different um, events for some reason. Well, not for some reason, for a lot of reasons, actually. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so don't get confused by them. Um, if you get confused by some of them, just try to Google it. <laughs> you can find a lot by just Googling it or what I did, which I accidentally close if you hit f1 you can get to the help function of tia portal you can just just search for events and there you have like events 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 i think it's the second one yeah the second one and there you have a list of all the single events that are there and if you for example what is it, what is um uh, selection changed for example occurs when the selection is changed okay that one is a bad example <laughs> uh, what happens on double click Okay, when user double clicks 
on an object from the symbol library whatsoever, right? So there's many events. Um, you can find help of those there. Those were the basics about events. Right? There's not much more about it, but there's plenty of them. Right? And of course, with each event that happens, you can do different things. So if this screen here is loaded, I, for example, cannot just increase a tag. I could now, I don't know, I could make an alarm. I could uh, show the keyboard. I could change settings. I could do so much. Right? Good. Basics done. I hope this is helpful at least a little bit. If you stuck through 15 minutes, 30 seconds, leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, check out our forum. That is awesome. And I should definitely visit way more often, but I can't these days. Unfortunately, there we go. Link in the description below. Uh, stay tuned for more videos every Tuesday, every Thursday, um, unless I take a break, which I haven't for ages now <laughs> so i might take a break soon um and if you want to support me leave a like don't forget to subscribe and go to my gofundme toss a coin in my direction link is in the description below that would be awesome if you want to help me um and yeah have a nice day stay safe stay healthy and i'll see you next time around Bye bye